Governor Terry McAuliffe vetoed it twice. He doesn't think parents should have a say. The mom in the ad? She made headlines in 2013 for campaigning against Toni Morrison's beloved. Her son was assigned to read it in an advanced placement English course. It's college level. Smart kid. The parent? Maybe not so much. Hmm. CNN host Chris Cuomo with those words for a concerned parent in a Glenn Youngkin campaign ad. Cuomo defending critical race theory while warning Democrats that the Virginia gubernatorial race should not be this close. Joe Concha, Fox News contributor, joins us now. Joe, why did Cuomo attack this mom with the same vitriol that he attacked, oh, say, a bicyclist in the Hamptons last year? Oh, right. That's when he was COVID positive, was shedding the virus, then drove 30 minutes from his home and then got into a verbal confrontation with a 60-something-year-old guy when the guy just asked, what are you doing out? Uh, you said you were sick with COVID. A police report was actually filed uh, against him. And Chris Cuomo still somehow uh, on the air, even though he actually also consulted his former brother governor on how to beat sexual harassment allegations. Yeah, this is the guy we should be speaking to. Uh, look, he's also labeled an anchor, Chris Cuomo is. No, he's not. He's a partisan, reckless opinion host. And, and given this latest commentary, where he called parents who don't support Terry McAuliffe and Virginia racist and accused them of wanting to ban, quote, black books, unquote, it's not surprising to see this anchor uh, sees everything through a racial prism, because that's exactly what critical race theory teaches. And that's the exact opposite of what Martin Luther King Jr. used to preach. He said that we should judge people by the content of their character and not by the color of of their skin. But that's kind of the M.O. over at CNN to do everything through a racial prism. And it's no wonder that Chris Cuomo has now lost 80 percent of his audience, eight in 10 people gone since just the beginning of the year, because that's what happens when you're elitist, out of touch and fake your own quarantine at the height of COVID, Todd. Well, um, let's talk about this here for a second, because the climate change conference is going to be happening in Scotland. And we can pull up here the list of Democrats who will be attending the U.N. climate change conference, the aforementioned conference. Uh, you can see them on your screen right there. Look, John Kerry's taken heat in the past uh, for flying a private jet to go to various climate uh, things, if you will. What do you expect to happen from this to come of it? Wow. Rules for thee, not for D's as the Democrats, right, Jillian? Uh, look, uh, J John Kerry, yes, he will lead this all-star team. You remember, this is the same guy who flew to Reykjavik, right, in Iceland in 2019 to pick up the Arctic Circle Award for Climate Leadership. Uh, yeah, he's the environmentally responsible one. Uh, it's so funny. And here's what he had to say about flying there. He said, quote, the only choice for someone like me who is traveling the world to win this battle. So he flies private, can't even go commercial. That's the only choice for him, right? He also flew a private jet to Obama Palooza back in August, Martha's Vineyard. Uh, and that was what a bunch of uh, maskless people, hundreds, uh, in an indoor setting, in an indoor tent. Uh, he couldn't take the ferry to Martha's Vineyard, which I've done. No, he actually uh, flew there instead. I also see that Pete Buttigieg is going there as well. I thought there was a supply chain crisis going on right. in this country. Maybe instead of flying to the climate summit in Glasgow, he should be going to Long Beach or Savannah or Newark, New Jersey, near me, to try to fix that problem in terms of going to the ports and talking to people actually running those places. So this is all virtue signaling. It's exactly what it looks like, and it's going to be completely hypocritical when all these people not only fly there, they fly there private, thereby destroying the climate even further. Yay, congratulations. Yeah. Speaking of climate, yeah. I like fall, too, as well. That is my favorite Mom, season. It's the best. I'm glad that you told us that, Joe. <laughs> I was wondering. We, we were. Course. We had bets. <laughs> who, needs, who needs ski lessons there, by the way? Pyro or Amelia? I, I ain't skiing. I, 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 I do. A ski slope I am a skier. We're not doing that again. I'm I am good, as well. Todd, scared. you're missing out, man. No, it's I'm not good. the skiing. It's the lodge after the yeah, ski. Exactly. As long as you it's do the lodge, that. It's the, the hot toddies. I get it. Okay. Operate ski that doesn't okay. happen after skiing. <laughs> Where do you go skiing, Mealy? No, just... Are you from Philly? They even have mountains to ski in over there? Or you go to Vermont? Where do you go? I, yeah, I mean, I've, I've been to Vermont. Um, I've, I've been to Canada. To ski. The I've travel segment continues. <laughs> Joe, we're going to talk well, to next time. Um, have a good one. Bye, okay, Joe. see you tomorrow. All right.